public defender. I'm Bart Matthews, your public defender. The case you're about to witness is a true one taken from the files of a public defender's office. A public defender is an attorney employed by your community to give legal aid to any person financially unable to retain counsel. The defendant, Joseph McDonald, age 16. The charges, arson and manslaughter. The place, El Clemente, California, a town gripped by fury. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Carl Smith speaking to you from the corridor of Superior Court, Citrus County, California. For the past few weeks, this town of 23,000 has been boiling with a violent hate. Inside the courtroom right now, the prosecution is presenting its case against one Joe McDonald. Unfortunately, Judge Lamar has cleared the court of spectators and press, but we do have a way of finding out what's going on in there. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Berry, owner of the Burned Hotel, has just finished testifying. Mr. Berry, the angry man of El Clemente, has almost single-handed whipped this town into the frenzy which grips it now. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, please. May I see you for just a moment, please, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. George Berry. Mr. Berry, we understand you've just finished testifying. Yeah. I told him the truth about that firebug. He'll get what's coming to him. Judge Lamar was the one who decided he was to be tried instead of being turned over to the youth authority. Well, could you tell us what you said on the witness stand? The truth. The district attorney called me and I told him that... Mr. Barry, did the defendant have any personal motive for setting fire to your hotel? He hated me. Why? Last year, I saw him hitchhiking a ride on Highway 101. When he got in the car, I saw his sweatshirts had the letters SMO on it. And what did those initials mean to you? St. Michael's Orphanage. I figured he was running away. So I zigzagged around some back roads, and before the kid knew what was happening, I had him back inside the gates. Did he say anything to you that night? When the sister was taking him in, he yelled, I know you. You own that hotel. I'll get even with you. Mr. Berry, is the public defender putting up much of a fight? How can he? That boy signed a confession. How can Matthews get out of that? Well, at his press conference, he said he was going to call but two witnesses, the boy and his sister, Anthony. Sister Anthony? That's what he said. We'll see about that. Sister Anthony? the boys how to fish and got enough dinner for a whole table. Sister Anthony, there's a visitor. You should come with us next time. When the good Lord has a trout hook onto your line, there's a satisfaction. Oh, thank you. You have a visitor, Mr. Barry. Oh, my. Sister, will you please take this to the kitchen? He seems very angry. Well, we'll just push up our bags and go see him. Now listen, Sister Anthony, I came here to tell you... Barry, won't you try one of our nice chairs? I had poor boxes in every room of my hotel, and every nickel went to this orphanage. I never missed a year of getting... And may the good Lord have you continue to favor us. How? I've got no hotel, no business, no nothing. Thanks to you and the way you treat these kids when they go wrong. Instead of manslaughter, they should be trying Joe McDonald for murder. He's a killer, I tell you, a born killer. So help me God. Joey, you heard the first witness. Your Honor, does the district attorney have an objection? I object to the public defender violating legal decorum by making a cheap appeal for the court's sympathy by addressing his client as Joey. Denied. Proceed, Mr. Matthews. Uh, Joey, let me read this to you. I, Joe McDonald, confess that I bought three gallons of gasoline at Porter's Garage and used it to set fire to the Citrus Hotel. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. Is this confession true? No, sir. Your Honor, object. The defendant has admitted that the signature is genuine. No violence or force was used to obtain this confession, nor was any promise of immunity given. Prosecution holds that since the confession is genuine, defendant be enjoined from denying its validity. Denied. Proceed, Mr. Matthews. 
If this confession was untrue, why did you sign it? Well, it, it was almost four o'clock in the morning. They kept asking me the same questions over and over again. I could hardly stay awake. Did you know what you were signing? Well, I, I just wanted to, to sleep, to, to stop all those questions. So I signed. But it is true that you bought the gasoline. Yes, sir. Where did you get the money? Well, you see, it was like this. I went to Sister Anthony's office. Joey. Hi, Sister Anthony. Sit down. Thank you. You'll enjoy this. It's called The Two Little Nuns. Well, I... I haven't time. Did you lose your privilege time? No. No, Sister, I... Well, I... I, I need some new shoes. And you'd like some money to go into town for new shoes? Yes, Sister. They're running at Hollywood Park. Are they? I found this under a boy's locker. You never said not to read it. There's a circle around the name of a trainer at Hollywood Park. Tom Van Buren. Haven't I heard you speak about him? Mm hmm He was a friend of my father's. Joey, you're planning to run away again. Finish your vocational training here. Learn to be a mechanic. Then, if you want to become a jockey, you know I'd rather you became a good jockey than a bad mechanic. But can't it wait? When I went into town with the truck, I saw Mr. Van Buren. He's living at the hotel. Did he offer you a job? Mr. Van Buren is on the Oregon short line. Is that a railroad? No, he's, he's broke. But he's got two mares with early foot. And if he can get to Caliente, he can win a purse. Why doesn't he? He can't even promote gasoline money. But if I could pay for the gas, I can ride at Caliente on Saturday. Oh, please, Sister Anthony. Absolutely no. We haven't enough money now without financing horse trainers. Okay, Sister Anthony. There's a truck going into town at 5.30. It'll drop you at the shoe store. Thank you, Sister Anthony. Thank you. Before I left the orphanage, I went to the kitchen and got an empty five-gallon can. In town, I got some gas and went to the hotel. I was looking for Mr. Van Buren's room on the second floor when it happened. in for Mr. Van Buren, they wouldn't let me. Let me go! You gotta let me go! Mr. Van Buren's still in there! Hey, look, everything I have in the world, look at it! My whole life! Look at it burn! Look at it burn! I stayed there until they carried Mr. Van Buren out. And then what happened? I ran away. I had to. Why? A man from the paper took my picture after I carried the old lady out. He, he knew I was from the orphanage, and I was afraid they might take me back. Well, where did you go? I hitched a ride to San Ysidro. The town just this side of the Mexican border? Mm -hmm. A lot of people from Caliente go there. That's where I found a man that used to know my father. And did you get a job riding? Yes, sir. I had the leg up on competitive in the fifth, and 